How is everybody doing today? Still sleepy? No? Worry about homework? No, I'm going to the parents. <laughs> okay, um, just a reminder. What day is uh, for next Sunday? What day is uh, next Sunday? Mother's yeah, Day. Mother's Day. Huh? So you haven't bought a gift for your mom. I'll tell you the best gift you for your mom. Uh, during next week, every morning, when you wake up, when you see your mom, give your mom a big hug and say, Mom, I love you. They will be the get best gift for her. You know. But still remember to buy the gift, okay? Um, uh, so let me uh, begin today's sermon with a uh, question. Um, have you ever been to a new place like, where um, you were a total stranger there? Like moving to a new neighborhood, going to a new school, or attending a new church? Like, you know, you don't know any, anybody over there and you are a stranger uh, to everybody over there. Do you have this kind of experience? Sure, yeah, yeah. So do you still remember how that felt? You remember? It probably felt a little bit, what, awkward, right? You felt nervous. You felt uncomfortable. Or even intimidated, like how I feel right now. First time coming to this church, right? <laughs> But you don't know how people will perceive me. Will I be accepted or will I, will I be um, rejected by the new group? So the other day, um, when I was driving with my wife from um, Los Angeles down back to the Bay Area, it was a long drive. So um, during, uh, during the time, you know, it's like seven hours, so we try to entertain each other, try to keep you know, to me away. So we uh, ask a lot of questions, like, you know, uh, try to know each other before we have met. And uh, you'll be amazed during those seven hours, actually you learn a lot about the other person. So one thing we found out is uh, before we met each other, we have moved so many times since we came to the US. And so we start coming to that. You know, how many times I have moved since I came to the US? I have moved 21 times in the last 20 years. <laughs> 21 times in the last 20 years. Covered two countries. Taiwan, US, and six US states. Texas, Arizona, Indiana, Connecticut, Colorado, California. Both Southern and Northern California. I have moved a lot. Like, you know, it's average one move every year. So I have moved so many times, you know, I consider myself a moving expert now. <laughs> but I still can get used to uh, the feeling of being a new place. You know, you feel kind of like alone, uncertain. And, and that's why I brought my wife here today with me. At least I know one person here, right? <laughs> um, but when you, you know, come to a new place and surrounded all by strangers, and suddenly you hear someone call your name. Hi, Samuel! Right? Wow, someone is calling your name. Then suddenly, you know, even the person probably you don't know that well, probably it's just a acquaintance. But somehow you just feel you are not left alone anymore. You start and you feel like, hey, you know, someone knows me by name here. It's a good feeling that someone knows you by name. We all, like people do, know us by our name. Right? We don't like people just recognize our face. Hey, uh, I know you, but what's your name again? <laughs> right? We don't like this kind of, like, you know, uh, uh, 
interaction. We let people know us by our name. So because name to us are very important, right? The name not just let people to identify us, but our name actually are our identity. Our identity. That's why you know when nobody knows your name, you are nobody. If somebody, everybody knows my name, then I somebody, right? So name is so important. But honestly, even when many people know your name, but most of them just know you very superficially. Right? Sometimes you even don't want to let people know the real you. Because you kind of worry if people truly know me, they may not like me. They may not accept me as who I am. So sometimes we try to pretend to be someone else. Right? I will try to do something we don't even like, like to do, we don't even enjoy of doing it. But we do it just so we somehow can fit in to the group. Right? Many times we create a false image, a false identity or even a full self. So we hope, we hope we can be accepted. We hope we can fit it. We hope we can blend into the group. I guess you know what I mean, right? But I want to let you know, you know, actually there's someone who knows you by name, but also knows you very well, very deeply, but still cares about you, still accept you as who you are. And basically that's what today's scripture we just read from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 to 5, uh, talk about. Uh, could you show on the slide? Let me read one more time about this, uh, this scripture. It's from Isaiah 43, 1 to 5. Even it's a God's word uh, to Israel, but it's still, you know, applied to us today, to every Christian. What he's saying here is, um, but now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. Call you by name. You're mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the river, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Basically, what here it says, you know, God knows you before you were, or, you know, think about it, before your parents even know you. God already knows you. No one has known you for their own. And no one has known you, has known you for their will. Because He has always been with you there. He has always been with you. Yes. Even when you think you were alone, actually God was there with you. Oh, at the moment, you didn't want anybody to be there next to you. God actually was there with you. But He still <coughs> accepts you. He still cares about you. Because He cares about you. Because you are His child. You are His child. You belong to Him. And that's what the first three verses talk about. Then He continued to say, the next one, for I am the Lord. You just pay attention to the one I highlighted, you know, I have underscored. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. See, God wants, wants to have a 
personal relationship with him. He wants to be your God, your Savior, not just the God or just a God, but your God, your Savior. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. So even when you look down on yourself, you feel I'm no good. You know, you feel nobody likes me, nobody respects me. Or you even hear people say to you, you are useless. I want you to remember what God actually sees about you, feels about you. God says you are pressure and honor in his eyes. You are pressure and honor in his eyes. And he loves you. He loves you. Did you hear that? God loves you. You know, the people up there, you know, way out there, God, he loves you and he cares about you. For him, you are a very important person. You are a VIP. Think about it. The most important person, the most powerful person in the whole universe loves you, cares about you, and he was even willing to die for you. That's how precious you are. That's how precious you are. So, fear not. Fear not. You know, our greatest fear is what? I'm nobody. No one cares about me. No one pays attention to me. I'm just a total failure, you know. I'm a stranger to, to anybody. And I don't fit into any group. I don't belong to any group. That's our greatest fear. Because we feel alone. We feel abandoned. But God said, no, you're not abandoned. You're not alone. Fear not. Fear not, for I am with you. For I am with you. The brother and sister. If one day you feel like no one knows your name, you come to a place, no one knows you by name, and all, you know, everyone misunderstood you, understands you, you have no friends, you are alone and abandoned. And maybe that's how you are feeling now. I, I want you to remember. God will die. God is still there with you. God is still there with you. Always. You're not alone. You are not nobody. In God's eye, actually, you are somebody. You are a very important person. He knows you by name. He knows you by name. He can see you in a big crowd of people. Mark stranger to just see you and pay attention to you. So, do you know? Do you know? Let me uh, conclude this sermon with a song. He knows my name. And I will ask my wife to play the music, to play the piano for us. She will play the first time. And you can just listen to the music. And just contemplate, just kind of meditate about the lead, what a leader is said. You just think about it. God knows you very well, but He still loves you, cares about you.
Thank you, David. Dear Jesus, we thank you for, for your promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for treating us as your friend, not as your subject or your servant. Thank you for being our best friend for life, not only in this life, but the life to come, the life to eternity. Lord, we thank you for always being there and will be there with us and for us. Thank you and help us to know you more and to love you more. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Yeah. So I guess you now can you give me? Thank you.